Hi everybody, Joe here again. So you know what that means. Time to grab yourself a brew, and maybe a cheeky little biscuit, and let's have a catch up. How are you doing? How are things going? We're still in lockdown here in the UK. Um, it's one of them, isn't it? But you know what? And it's raining outside. Got very wet this morning walking Eric. So um, I thought let's have a catch up in time for some crafty play. Now, recently I've had quite a few emails from um, some of your lovely crafters saying that as often in January, your mojo's gone walkabout. So if any of you see it, can you pass him back? Um, Mr Mojo seems to be a bit elusive at the minute for some people. So um, my little tip is, why not have a bit of a tidy in your craft space? I know we don't like that word tidy up us crafters, but what I'm thinking is, go back to basics and can you remember the first stamp you bought, the first stencil you bought? Um, I mean, often us crafters have quite an eclectic mix. So I just went for sort of different companies and thought, what was the stamp I bought? So today I'm going to share with you a little project I've done using my first stamp set and my first stencil that I bought from All and Create. Often we tend to sort of have new favourites and if we're not careful the original ones can almost go to the bottom of the list. Um, <laughs> I'm dying to say like children but I better not because I'll get into trouble if I say that. Obviously I love both my boys and my grandchildren all the same. What a naughty parent that would be wouldn't it? Anyway I digress. So, um, so what I did was I had a look and this is the idea I came up with. So if you want to join me this is the sort of thing we're going to create, but you know me, I may just go off on a tangent. So to start off with, we're going to make the background and I'm going to put that on one side so that I can have an idea where I'm going. And for this, I'm going to use this stencil and this is stencil number eight. You can tell the early numbers and I don't think it's even got a name to be honest. It was Baby Pasha. Those were the days before they even named them. But I do find this so useful and great for men's cards. Because dare I say, and don't take offence, you uh, lovely males out there. You're not the easiest of people to make designs for. So that's what we're going to use. And I'm going to use a couple of inks and I'm going to go for the Distress Oxide. And I'm going to go for Rustic Wilderness and Vintage Photo. And those are the two. Now we're going to use the trick where we put ink on the back of the stencil. Now I know we do this quite a lot but what you have to remember with this stencil is it obviously has a right side and a wrong side as in because we've got the compass with the north, south, west and east. Now on my design I want the stencil to be that way don't I? So that I can actually see if we bring the finished one in you can just make out the W there for West, the N there, that the word travel. So we have to think about this one and that's where it's good. Give yourselves a bit of a challenge. So we need to put the ink on the back. Now you're all probably screaming at me, Joe, we know that we're not daft. But I have to say, I've done it the wrong way myself. So hmm, I've been there. Now I'm going to start by just putting some ink direct to stencil, DTS, we've got DTP haven't we, direct to paper, so I'm inventing my own direct to stencil, DTS. So I'm going to put some green round, I love this rustic wilderness, N never used to be a green fan, but do you know I do think this is just such an earthy colour, I'm really impressed with it. Now what I'm going to do now is just bring in my blending tool and lightly just blend that ink just so it covers the areas of the stencil where I want it. Just for me this is the easiest way. If you've got a way that you like to do it either by blending or direct to stencil you know what I'm like you just do the best way for you and I just want to make sure that the ink covers all those bits and obviously because of the mylar the stencil's made out of, it's easy to blend on it. So just cover all those bits. Might just dab a bit of green in that. I sort of want the centre a bit brown, but my main focus is the green. 
and as always a quick wipe of my mat and then once it's dry just spritz the stencil and again I'm going to do this off camera just so I can do it I don't want to do it over my craft area so luckily Eric isn't sat under my table at the minute this is the normal bit where my Labrador gets wet so I've just spritzed it and then I'm going to take the stencil to the paper just so that I can see where to place it you could do it the other way but for me I just like to see so I can hopefully place it more or less in the middle and I'm just going to give it a press and again this is the bit where you don't want to rush just give that ink and water time to sort of soak into the card now I'm using a piece of stencil card here from uh, Clarity just because I know it's good with water and it will take the ink and water really well and I think this piece is 16 centimetres square <laughs> if my memory serves me correct which it doesn't do a lot these days I don't know about you but has your memory gone a little bit since lockdown I did mention it in my workshop the other day and the ladies actually said it was old age so I'm I'm sort of mm, I'm sitting on the fence as to whether it's a lockdown memory or old age memory or a combination of both hmm. I don't know whether it's just uh Maybe it's, maybe it's the weather as well. We'll blame the weather. We blame that for everything, don't we? Right, let's have a little peek. Have we got something going on under there? Oh, we have. Now, again, this is just a background. So don't be very precious. It doesn't have to be a perfect impression. We're just making a background paper. And again, if that Mr Mojo's gone, this is a great way to make yourself some lovely backgrounds. Get out those stencils you haven't used in a while. Honestly, it really does reinvigorate you. Now look at that. I've got to be honest. I'm so pleased with that. I love this. Now again, like I say, for men's cards. I mean, do you collect old maps? I must admit, before lockdown, I... Um, kept going to our local charity shop here and they know me when I go in now that oh we haven't got any maps but any maps or old atlases old books um that are given I love to just go a I give a little bit to charity don't I it's money going in their pocket but also the great to add with pieces like this I'm thinking those men's cards we might need this year how lovely is that I'm gonna put my stencil to one side I'll clean that later in fact I might even just spritz that and make another background later but we'll put this now and just let it dry. Obviously, you can use your heat tool, but it is better if it dries naturally. So we'll move on to the butterflies. Now, these, again, it's an early set. And again, my workshop ladies know I use this a lot. I love this. Number 45, and this is one of Tracy Evans's early ones with her. And for me, this butterfly image and this heart image, I use a lot. I really do. So what we're going to do today is I've got a little piece of card and I'm just going to show you how I colour mine. Lots of different ways. Just going to try and find a clean piece of copy paper. So I tend to stamp, oh, excuse me, I tend to stamp on um, copy paper and a magazine. Again, it's just, just something I do. One of my little quirks. But we all have them, don't we? Oh, well, I hope so. I hope I'm not the only one. Right, so nice light tapping. Oh, my All and Create flexible acrylic block. And I'll just show you with one butterfly. And again, these are lovely to stamp. I mean, to be honest, if you've got patterned papers you need to use up, but you know me, I love making my own backgrounds. But they are great if you've made some backgrounds, maybe you've already made backgrounds and um, with it having open space, look, it's a lovely stamp to use on your ready-made backgrounds and it stamps beautifully. And then the heart. Now we're going to need two of each and in good old Blue Peter fashion, I have got them prepared. Now I have to say, those of you in the UK, I have got a Blue Peter badge, you know. Have you? I bet a lot of you have. I think it's something us crafters, it was the sort of thing we were into, isn't it? I'm just going to block that. 
obviously your Versafine is a slow drying ink, so try and get in the habit of, of blotting. Now to colour these, I sort of do something a little bit different. And I'm gonna take my ink. So this one's Peacock Feathers. I want to use a combination of the Peacock Feathers and the Rustic Wilderness. And I'm thinking of doing two, one side of the, the two wings in one colour. And then, and this is such a quick and easy way. Obviously you could watercolour them. And I've just realised I wanted my heart in blue as well. So let's bring that back in. Whiz a bit on the blue. And then come in with the green. Now various things you could do now, you could flick them with water to get some faux bleach in. But what I'm going to do is, what I've discovered is lovely, is if you add a little bit more depth, and this is where I'm going to bring in my Ink Tense pencils. And on the heart, I'm just going to add a little bit of blue look at the bottom and up the side. And again, on this butterfly, just round the wing. And again, so it's just up the sides and sort of in the middle look. And the same with this one. So I just go down each side. So obviously I've got a blue pencil for my peacock feathers and a green pencil for the rustic wilderness. And this is just adding a little bit of depth, a little bit of shading. And I've got my paintbrush in a water pot. As you know, the first thing I do when I come in my craft room is fill my water pot with water. And I have my fan brush and my fine paintbrush in there. And they stay there all day. And look, so I'm just blending that ink in alongside. And so it just adds that nice bit of shading. And I find it's just such a lovely combination. You know, do remember you can combine your products. If you're doing ink, you don't just have to leave it with ink. You can add your ink tense pencils. These products work lovely together. They're not standalone products. And again, I love that look, just that nice. And because we're adding the water, it almost adds to that fluidity, no harsh lines. And I've got to be honest, very quick and easy to do. So what I would do at home, well, I am at home, silly girl. So what I do in my craft room is I take, as you can see, my scraps of card and I would do a whole, quite a few of different um, butterflies, hearts. Now, again, if you're having one of them days where you don't know what to do, do yourself quite a few because then they're ready for future projects. Now, with the heart, I've got to be honest, what I tend to do as well is put glossy accents on. Can you see that? And then I let it dry and afterwards I cut it out because two reasons. One, it's so much easier to cut out and I find I get a much better edge with my glossy accents. So, as I say, in good old Blue Peter fashion look, I've got two hearts cut out and two butterflies. Now, with the butterflies, what we're going to do is you leave the antennae on, because if you don't, you know what? It goes around in circles, because that's how we fly straight. But I need those. So we're going to cut those, and you cut down the side. Obviously, you don't want to see me cutting out, so I've cut these out ready. So we'll put those back over there. And then obviously it's like this. This is good because I've got those ready. Pop glossy accents on him when I've finished. And then they're ready for me to cut out for my next project. What is it Abs calls them? Half finished projects? No. Hmm. He's got initials for it, hasn't it? Hmm. I'll have to think about that. You see, that's why I should have thought before I mentioned it. So you'll be you'll be thinking now, message in. Right, that's more or less dry. I'm just going to put my heat tool over it just to, because we're going to do a little bit of extra stamping on it. So we'll just give it a little blast. And again, always remember when you heat from the front, heat from the back, and it'll just help flatten your card out. 
Ah, that's it. PhDs, project half done. I knew it would come to me. You know what it's like. So, yes, I've got a few project half done. So, what I'm thinking here is let's add a little bit of interest under where I want those butterflies. So, if I bring the finished article in, you can see, look, just a little bit of... I want to bring a little bit of black now. I'm going to matte on there and black. So, I just want some extra little black detail. So, for that, I'm going to use two of my A7 stamps. And the two I'm going to use is this one first, which is Alphabet Splatter 351. And again, that's by Tracy. And the other one is this one, which I adore as well, the Splodge. And that's by Abs, that's 362. Now, I'm not going to put my stamping mat because I don't want these to be perfect crisp stamping. I just want to get the idea. Now, with this, I just want to check it's the right way up. Yeah, so I want a little bit of this here, don't I? So we're going for black, but I don't want any harsh edges. So I'm thinking one butterfly is going there. So we'll pop that there. Take this bottom bit where the other butterfly is going. Lovely. And then where my hearts are, let's put another bit there. Now, I'm actually going to press it all down in case there's any ink left off either end. I might actually just get a little bit. Let me lift that up. Yes. So you've almost got a little bit of second generation from the top and bottom bit. So I'm thinking again. Sorry, I just knocked my lamp. Do you know what? If only I could be professional. So I'm thinking butterfly there, butterfly there and hearts there. See, I don't want too much black. But this has gone over. You'll say, what's the point of stamping under? You will see it, but we don't want too much of it. But I almost want to carry this on. So that's where this splatter one's going to come in. Now, this one I'm actually taking off my acetate. And so what I'm thinking is, let's follow the splatters here this way. Let's take them off. Now, I want to just see if I can get, if I bend my stamp this little group of splatters here. And if I can put them here, yeah. And then that one there. So what the idea is when the butterfly's there, that just carries, I need something there, just tiny little hint of a, so I've got that flow. And in fact, little bit yeah that looks better and I'm gonna do the same this side I love opposite corners I love the diagonal so let's go for a bit of a I want a different shape I don't want it to look almost um identical or opposite let's have a few little there we go and I turn my work just because it's easier for me I don't want to be stretching so I like that that's just enough. Maybe just one splodge like that. Can I get... Hmm, this will be interesting, won't it? Can we get just one splodge there? Yeah. Well, one and a half, but who's counting? I like that. So, while I've got the VersaFine ink, I'm going to stamp this lovely little word in that says... Um, Trust your wings and it's a tiny little stamp look and it's perfect. As you know, I've got to think about these coffee stirrers. So let's try and find a relatively flat one. Not that I've got a lot of them, you understand. But obviously you do get one when you go and buy your, your nice little coffee from these uh, nice establishments. So we'll just stamp... Check it's the right way up. I just want to stamp it three times on here. One at each end. And another one sort of in the middle-ish. And the reason I've done that now again is just to give it a couple of seconds to dry. So we'll pop that there. Now, I must admit, at this point, I'm going to mat and layer this up just because I find it easier 
and I'm just going to do a very quick double sided tape just because for me I find it easier to pop it on the black now remember your diagonal one across the back it'll just help pull the um, your design if you just put them around the edges you can be left with a gap in the middle so you want your design to pull to the sides and keep that middle bit flatten. Now we're just going to add a little bit of glue as well. It's that belt and braces. It's because I'm a Cumbria girl. And let's find my black. Right, so we've got a bit of wiggle time because we've done our bunny ears. So we can pop that down and then... There we go. And I find that easy now to work on adding my embellishments and things because then I don't have to keep turning it over. Now, if you notice on the finished design, I've got some green splatters. So I'm going to do that now. What I love to do is I love to just carry, um, I know a lot of people like matting and layering on pure white card and that's fine. And sometimes I do do that, but I do love to just almost extend the design. So what I would do now is just get my card. I mean, look at that. Doesn't it look lovely? And then very quickly, a little bit of ink. And again, having your paintbrush in, um, in water all the time means it's ready. And you can just, again, opposite corners. And I do this now so that this can dry. And then we'll be ready to put the whole thing together. Nothing, don't overthink it. A few quick splats. And then to tie it in, let's just add this corner, this corner, and a few. That's all we need. Wipe that up. And that's looking lovely, isn't it? So let's find our butterflies. We're just going to shape them a little. Now what we need to do is decide where the butterflies are going. And we're just going to add a little bit of shading. Now as you know, I love my charcoal pencil. And I've used this tin, I've had this tin for years. And yes, they are going down a bit every time I sharpen them. So I'm just going to use a deep one, a dark. And I'm just going to, so if that butterfly is going there, I'm just going to trace round, again, nothing too specific. And don't judge me on the shape, please. This is the bottom of the butterfly. <laughs> I know what you ladies are like, some of you. So I'm just going to, now you can use your finger to blend this. I'm going to use a, a paper stump. And again, when that goes on, and I'm just going to go under this wing as well. Now, you could use your inks and colour the other side of the wings. So depending on how you're going to decoupage, I'm going to sort of shape mine like that. So they bend back down. But if you were going to raise it, obviously you could colour underneath there with your ink. Also, if you wanted, you could stamp your butterfly on your work. For me, for this one, I don't feel the need to do that. But again, as I say, it's all about choices. So I'm just going to put that there. And then should we have that one? We'll have that one there. So again, I'm going to have my shade there. And we'll just smudge it up a bit with the paper stump. How many of you got paper stumps and never used them, bought them, and then found them when you've been tidying up and thinking, what did I buy these for? Yep. Now, hearts. Where are we going to have our hearts? So, back with the co with our coffee stirrer. Give it a bit of a tear. Now, that's going to have to... I've got that there. So, that's going to have to go there. So... Again, just put the line under there. 
and smudge it up a bit. You smudge in, A, it makes it look better, but also it fixes the charcoal to your card. So it is worth doing. So that's going there. Put the butterfly back and the hearts. Let's see. One dangling there, do you think? And one there? I, I like that, I must admit. I think that's a... For me, I don't I don't think they'd look right side by side. And I don't know why. I don't think that looks as nice, you know. Does it? Or what about... Oh, you see, choices, isn't it? Choices, choices. Right, I'm going to go for that. Stop messing. So, two things. We've got our fine liner pen. And let's just go. That's where we're having it. Stuck now. It's got to go there. A couple of strings, little bow, and that one's on. This one, there. Right, we're going to go for that. So just go, for, don't worry about it. Don't think about it. And if you do two or three lines, look, it just looks better. If you just do one and you're not happy with it, the same with the bow. If you do a couple, it's much sketchier. You'll be amazed. You get away with it better. And then a bit of charcoal underneath. This one's going there. Again, let's blend that. Same with this one. Sorry about the noise. Bit annoying, isn't it? Really, I should have some of those uh, music playing in the background. And this little bit that we chopped off Let's put that, and I love this bit, look, where it hasn't broken quite st straight. I like that, all those little bits. Now, I don't want that there, do I, because it's too, let's put it there. That looks better. So, move it this way a bit, and then we can go around. Again, a bit blending. And I'm just blowing it rather than using my finger because I don't want to get charcoal. Only because I'll get it everywhere. The number of times I smudge it with my finger and then <laughs> my nose itches, scratch my nose. And it's like, oh, really? So this is building up, I, I think, really nicely. And we can put that away. So the beauty of it is you're nearly done. And as I say, how effective is it? And what I'm going to do is, I want to show you, on my butterflies, what I've added is a couple of safety pins. Now, this is my little box look. And we've got some before and after. So, I buy things like safety pins look. And then, I put them in my little rusting tub in the utility room. And so, we've got before and after. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. So I'm going to see if I've got two of the larger ones. And as you can see, there's all sorts of bits in here. I've got cogs. I've got pen nibs. It's amazing what goes in my rust bath. I love watching the, um, is it the reclamation shop? Something like that. And they get old rusty things, don't they? And put them in a, a sonic cleaning bath and clean them up. Well, I'm the opposite. <laughs> I've got my little bath to rust them up and then they go in my tin here, look. My little tin of treasures. My good friend Sharon in Belfast bought me that, so that's lovely. Now, what I thought we could do with the butterflies, I did wonder about literally just gluing it on top, but I didn't like that. But what I worked out was I could very carefully look. She says, how did I do it? Oh, I didn't do it like that. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? I worked out what to do and then did it wrong. Ah. That's how I did it. And that way we still see all the butterfly, but you've still got the lovely safety pin. So if we do the same with this one, and again, so I'm just going over, <laughs> now I've remembered, over the antennae. So if I just glue those down, so I'm using pin flare. Now 
and I'm just going to use a blob on each wing and obviously because it's glued down it will hold if you wanted to put a little bit glossy accents I always use for my metal if you want to put a touch of glossy accents under there you could so that one put in there aren't we and then this one same thing him back and then let's add a bit on here must admit this bradle I find so useful for applying my pin flare I only bought it I was at a craft show remember the days when we could do craft shows and we could go and I just love the wooden handle and yes I'm so sad I bought it just because of the wooden handle but it's so useful for my pin flare. And I can control it better. And almost spread it out, look. So that one's going there. Almost like a little jigsaw coming together, isn't it? Spread that one, that one's going there. And then a little bit on here. And that's just building up so nicely isn't it now do remember with your pin flare always wind it up so that you've got a little bubble look if you don't the air will get in and you'll be sorry because it'll go hard and then you'll have a plug and try and remove it and oh it's not good so i just want to wipe my little brad all again i don't want that to stay sticky put that in my container so that's very nearly done, isn't it? As I say, so quick and easy, but enjoyable. And when we put that on there, look, I think that just finishes it off. So your last finishing tricks, as always, we need that Posca splatter, don't we? So bring my Posca pen in. Let's have a couple on the butterflies, not too many. Maybe across there. Yeah, that's enough. And then the final finishing off trick with some glossy accents. And again, this mimics what you've got. Did you notice on the final one, if I bring it in, if I can just tip it. Sorry, my, my photography is not that good. Can you see on the splatters, I've just put some glossy accents. Just because obviously the splatters and we want them to look a bit like the, the watery splatters. So to finish off, I would just add... A little bit of glossy accents on these lovely ink splatters and I'm just going to turn it round because obviously I don't want to lean across the ones do try and get in a habit of turning your work makes it so much easier for you and again lid on glossy accents straight away and that's our finished design so I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've enjoyed catching up with me today. I've got some uh, more fun to share with you later in the week. And um, you take care. And thank you for all your lovely comments that you leave. It, it's so lovely to read them. And I love to find out what you're doing and how things are going for you. So you take care, everybody. <clears throat> I think it's time for me to go and get another little coffee. Maybe a cheeky biscuit. So take care, everybody. Love and hugs. Bye for now.